Hey everybody, I'm Chris Calcaterra, I'm with Glaucos, and at Glaucos, uh, we are in the business of transforming uh, glaucoma therapy. Um, as you've heard a lot about glaucoma, it is a very large market. In fact, market scope estimates that it's about a $4.9 billion market. Most of that today is made up of pharmaceuticals. There is an unmet need and that many of the uh, uh, procedures that are available today, whether it be meds or laser and so forth, have their uh, downsides. Uh, we have had some success uh, in this area since we launched about uh, a little over two years ago. Uh, we've been able to get uh, good reimbursement for the product. Uh, we've been able to get it out into the hands of the ophthalmic community. And it's just the beginning. Uh, iSten is our first device. Uh, we have uh, two others coming down the uh, pipe. Hopefully we'll get through the FDA, and I'll tell you more about that. As I mentioned, uh, the current market is $4.9 billion. Um, uh, uh, market scope estimates that that'll grow to uh, $6.6 .6 in five years. And most of that is based on the fact that uh, they're considering the adoption of MIGS uh, over time. As we know, uh, intraocular pressure uh, is caused when there is a blockage uh, or an obstruction, a resistance to outflow uh, within the outflow system. There are two uh, pathways. Uh, one would be the conventional pathway, which is uh, Schlem's Canal through the trabecular meshwork, uh, the second through the UV scleral outflow system. And we are building devices, microscale technologies to uh, overcome that obstruction. Until MIGS was uh, introduced, the current treatment algorithm was to treat with drugs, more drugs, more drugs, and then move on to uh, laser, uh, SLT or ALT. And really surgery was reserved for the most severe cases as Eric alluded to. Um, and so because of the high morbidity associated with uh, surgery, it wasn't used very often. It was done primarily, uh, if not almost exclusively, uh, by glaucoma specialists. And so there's a real opportunity to introduce a surgical device, a permanent implant, and introduce that earlier into the continuum. So, iStent, the first FDA-approved, the only FDA-approved uh, MIGS device at this time. You'll see that there's, there's more coming. Um, it's about a millimeter in length. It's the size, uh, the lumen is the size of a human hair. Um, it, it is the uh, smallest medical device known to be implanted into the uh, human body. Uh, but that's just the beginning. Uh, we have uh, two other devices that are currently uh, in FDA, uh, I, or excuse me, ID uh, clinical trials. Uh, eye stent is in combination with cataract surgery. Uh, there are places across the globe that use it uh, on phakic and pseudophakic patients, but it's primarily done in combination with cataract surgery. Our second generation device you saw with uh, Eric Donnefeld's video, it is two stent injectable therapy. Uh, we have uh, two uh, trials ongoing right now, one in an expanded phase that's in uh, combination with cataract surgery, and one in phase one uh, that is done in phakic and pseudophakic patients. And we're excited about that opportunity and that the size of the phakic pseudophakic market obviously is much bigger than the combo cataract market. In fact, it's about four times larger. We also have a, uh, the iStent Supra, uh, which is a device that's implanted uh, in the suprachoroidal space. It's in an expanded phase uh, US pivotal ID trial, and uh, we're hopeful that these will get approved and we will have a full armamentarium of products uh, to treat this disease. Uh, in terms of uh, the work that we've done, we feel that we are uh, the uh, science-based company. We've got 16 ongoing clinical trials right now we got two phase four post-approval studies for a total of 18. We've got 33 peer-reviewed manuscripts out there. In terms of our uh, uh, commercial launch, we're quite proud of this. We've been told by uh, some that it's the uh, highest revenue launch of a new market class uh, device in the history of ophthalmology. Uh, we have uh, consistently grown sales in our two years. We're up to 52 based uh, sales representatives and uh, we're, we're getting good clinical outcomes. So in summary, um, we were the first uh, to develop a MIGS Aventurno uh, stent, uh, first to receive FDA approval back in uh, June of 2012. 
Uh, we're the first and only company to have a full franchise and pipeline. Uh, we're first to do a comparative control PMA trial for glaucoma device and, and really created the cataract combination protocol. Uh, first day to get panel approval, that was in uh, July of 2010. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, peer-reviewed articles and, and uh, studies ongoing, and uh, we established the MIGS reimbursement device, and that, that's no easy task. We've got two CPT codes, uh, one for trabecular bypass, one for suprachoroidal bypass, and finally, uh, we were selected by Wall Street Journal two years in a row as one of the top uh, 20 uh, uh, companies out there. In fact, we were the top healthcare company in the last, last one. Thank you very much, and uh, I look forward to seeing you at the meeting.